Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All right, class. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the first lecture of week nine, uh, where we are discussing the Wagner energy and potential difference and potential. So uh, this is where we left. We said that the Wagner in moving a point charge in the field of in uh, the field electric field intensity uh, E. Okay, uh, is given by this formula equation number two, and the differential amount of work which is done in moving uh, the same charge by differential length and uh, a length smaller than this is not possible. So, if you want to move a charge uh, in in some constellation of arrangement of some other charges, so charges which are producing this electric field intensity and you want to move this charge Q in this electric field intensity. So uh, by how much? By this much distance. This So this much amount of work you have to do. This is the minimum amount of work which can which you must do in order to move the charge by the minimum distance. And if you want to move some microscopic distance between the initial point and the final point, then the total amount of work done uh, in moving this charge uh, within the field E produced by some uh, arbitrary arrangement of charges uh, whose field is given by E is given by this formula. So this is the work done in moving uh, this charge Q and the field of some arbitrary arranged charges. So now this is something which is macroscopic and this is something which is you know uh, movement at microscopic level. Uh, in both the uh, formula equation 1 and equation 2 uh, we uh, uh, know that if you want to uh, make the work zero here, uh, the smallest amount of work required to move a charge by a smaller distance, or a maximum, uh, or a microscopic, uh, or the of or the work done in moving uh, a charge by a charge by some microscopic distance, uh, which is given by this formula. If you want to make the work zero in both the cases, there are some trivial cases which I have just uh, talked about in the previous lecture. Bilkul fuzul kasim ke stupid cases ye ho sakte hain ki aap koi charge ki value zero kar dein ya koi aur field ko zero kar dein jiske ke andar aap charge move karna cha rahe hain ya aap charge ko move hi na kare DL ko zero kar dein. So we are not talking, we are not interested in those stupid trivial uh, cases in which uh, either you make the, uh, the charge which you are moving to be zero or the field to be zero or the you uh, or you decide to not move that charge definitely you don't have to do work in that case but uh, there is one case in which uh, neither q is zero the charge which you are you are moving has some value nor the field is zero nor the distance or the uh, path you take to move the charge is zero meaning you are uh, moving the charge uh, by some distance but it's still the work done is zero in that case. Uh, how? That will be possible if you decide to move the charge in the field such that the direction in which you move the charge, that direction is everywhere perpendicular to the field throughout its journey from initial point to final point. If you are able to do that, if you are somehow able to find a path along which electric field intensity is always perpendicular to that path then the work done in moving that uh, this point charge along that path will be zero and uh, just to give you a teaser that path or collection of all those points over which uh, if you make the, the charge if you try to move the charge uh, through those collection of points and the work done is zero collection of those points are known as equipotential curve in two dimensions or equipotential surface in three dimensions but we will talk about that later so equation number two is a special kind of integral we have talked about that and that this is called line integral okay and line this line integral can be broken broken into uh, these two integrals as well and we had discussed a lot of mechanics about this equation number two that is the line integral and we said that this line integral is a concept which is associated to field theory not electromagnetic field theory alone but but this li the line integral in this specific form where we have got this charge this electric field intensity now this equation number two is line integral uh, whose mechanics is this but this equation 2 is now showing us the line integral for uh, electro 
static cases or electromagnetic cases okay all right so we said that uh, the, we uh, had discussed about this and i'm sure you 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 can recall what this equation was now what i want to do here is which i wanted to do in the previous class but could not do because of the uh, time limitation uh, if i somehow i consider that this electric field intensity over which we have uh, through which we had moved the charge along this curve or this equation says that along this these segments straight line between 1 to 2 1 to 2 straight line between 2 to 3 straight line between 3 to 4 uh, if we move the charge along these straight lines this will be the work approximately the work okay uh, but these segments have to qualify to be called as incremental, not differential, incremental, very small. So that's where it is approximately equals to. Had we make it uh, so small that it could be treated as differential, then this approximately equals to would be, uh, uh, would be changed to exactly equals to. But anyway, so if this is the case, and if we consider that the field in which we have moved this charge, this field is constant. Constant means not neither the magnitude is changing nor the uh, direction is changing. So suppose that we have a sheet, we have a sheet of infinite charges placed over here like this. This is the sheet of infinite charges, rho s placed over here so the and let's say it is positively charged so the flux which will be uh, emitting or the field through the uh, due to this infinite sheet of charges would definitely be constant because it is given by rho s divided by 2 epsilon naught so, uh, and it is independent of the distance and the direction is always perpendicular to the sheet so let's say there is a sheet infinite sheet here which is producing this charge uh, th this this uh, field so in that case obviously e1 e2 e3 all will be the same and we can regard that as e so in that case actually e1 e2 e3 can be uh, equated to some value e so if that's the case then what i get i'll get uh, e e e here everywhere e so since this is constant what i'll get i'll get i can take the e out of this and similarly using the property of dot product so in the bracket what we will be left with is this okay so i have omitted one step just one step so uh, if we consider this these e1 will become e this e2 will become e this e3 will become e and if, if that's the case and uh, so i can write this equation uh, as this and this is what this is the vector segment this plus the second vector segment plus the second vector third vector segment so it is nothing but a vector which starts from b and terminates at a so if i resolve this vector segment delta l1 i'll get a horizontal component and a vertical component okay so if i resolve this one i'll get a horizontal component and the vertical component if i resolve this one horizontal vertical so uh, i i can either uh, add three vectors using head to tail rule or i can add the horizontal components together and the vertical components together simple basic fundamental uh, uh, fundamental vector algebra so this is nothing but this bracketed term is nothing but is nothing but a vector let me call this vector uh, a vector which starts from point b and terminates at point a so if i would just draw a line from b to a l b a is that vector but since i don't want to mess to mess up with the diagram so i'm not uh, drawing that all right so if that's the case that if electric field intensity is constant everywhere so instead of uh, you know uh, moving the charge q along these segments if i would 
move the charge along the curve exactly so in that case i cannot use this you know approximation rather i'll have to use equation number two but in that case i'll have to divide this uh, line this path from b to a into infinitely small segments where each segment is of differential length all right so if that's the case if that's the case what i'll have here I, what i'll have here will be uh, that will be okay that will be uh, work done will now be exactly equals to because i am dividing the path in uh, differential lengths minus q el1 multiply by dl1 first okay then el2 multiply by dl2 plus the third up till infinity okay which will be equal to according to this equation it will be equal to q e now i'm again considering that electric field intensity is constant e dot dl1 plus e dot dl2 up to up to infinity i'll have to consider all the segments minus q since electric field intensity is constant i can take it out of the uh, take it out of the bracket and in the bracket what i'll be left with i'll be left with this like this so now what's this this is again infinitely small vectors okay infinitely small vectors added together just like this uh, uh, in in this we had uh, incremental vectors if you add them all together you will get a vector which starts from b to a in this case we had this but if i uh, take this case so uh, what will happen if i just forget about this case i had decided to divide this path in three segments had I divided it in six segments as your textbook did, what would happen? So, uh, in that case, we, I would have uh, smaller segments, but if I would add all uh, those six segments, vector segments, what I'll get at the end, I'll get uh, a vector which starts from B to A. Why? Because at the end, if you add, you're adding the segments means adding a vector uh using head to tail rule head is here tail is here head is here okay so at the end you will get a vector which starts from b and terminates at a exactly the same thing if i divide this segment into 12 uh this path into 12 segments i'll get the same result 24 segments same results 100 segments same results 10,000 segments same results 1 billion segments same results infinite seg segments I'll get same results. All right, I'll get same results. So this is what I'll get. Work then will be exactly equal to this. Okay, so uh, it it says that it does not matter if I had chosen the path. If I, if, I, if, I, if I had moved that point charge Q exactly along this path or along these segments, path is independent of the work done. Here I was saying that it is approximately equals to, for the case of, again remember, for the case of, uh, for the general case, yes, it will be approximately equals to, but as soon as I have made an assumption that electric field is constant so now it is telling us this result and this result is telling us that whether you divide this whole path in three segments or six segments and use this formula or 
divide this in infinite segments or in other words move the point charge along the path which I have drawn here exactly the work done will be the same it means that the work done is not depending on the path we are taking either we take this path or exactly smooth path the work done is the same when only in the case when electric field intensity is constant so it means that work done if electric field intensity is constant is independent of the path you choose it only depends on the field and if the field is already given to you and you have decided to choose a to move a charge within that field so the work done depends only on this vector which starts from the initial point and terminates at the final point so it means that for a constant electric field intensity the work done in moving a charge from one point to another point is independent of path it does not matter matter you move uh, along these three steps or six steps or 12 steps or 24 steps or 100 steps or billions of steps or you exactly follow this path as long as the initial point and final point is same as long as the addition of all those sum will uh, be equals to the uh, a vector which starts from initial point and the final point will get exactly the same work done so it means that for especially only and only and only electric field intensity equals to constant case what i can do i can say i can say that this work done is not approximately equals to rather it is exactly equals to y because uh, this formula using equation number two i we got this we are getting exactly the same results so again let me remind you and i won't be responsible if even after reminding or recapping uh, this uh, that i won't be responsible if you take home uh, a wrong message that this equation or this fact is true this is exactly equals to only and only and only when electric field intensity is constant meaning the sheet of charge is there if there is some line charge or some other charge arrangement which is not constant so you cannot draw this conclusion that electric field intensity is independent of the path followed okay We'll talk about uh, this later on, inshallah, because this is, this is one of the most important things. So, such fields which are independent of the path followed are known as, not exactly, but are, are, are known as um, conservative fields, okay? So they only depend upon the initial point and the final point. It does not matter you whether you move charge like this or move the charge in this fashion and place it here as long as the initial point and final point is the same, is the same you uh, are dealing with uh, conservative fields so there is another uh, more accurate way to uh, to define a conservative field because right now it it's it's it feels like that only e equals to constant if if only electric field is constant then only then we'll get conservative field no uh, there are there are other cases in which uh, you can say that electric field intensity is uh, a conservative field electric field is a conservative field so uh, this is not the uh, right way to prove that electric field intensity is a conservative field there are other ways to uh, prove it so we'll we'll talk about that uh, in a minute or so all right so let's consider uh, this infinite uniform line charge uh, density placed on z-axis two cases i'm going to discuss so in both the cases we have got infinite uniform line charge densities uh, uh, of value rho l placed over entire z-axis so i have shown shown some thickness to it but now you can uh, know you know that uh, there is no thickness associated to any line charge density so uh, so now, uh, I why I am interested in this? I want to show you uh, the special case, non-trivial case, non-stupid case, in which uh, 
if you move uh, then the work done will be zero while neither q is zero nor e is zero nor dlz is zero so uh, for these two cases th this case uh, uh, we know that infinite line charge densities are there so definitely electric field intensity is not zero and let's say i am taking some some positive point charge and i decide to move uh, this point charge starting from this point b okay and uh, staying staying on z equals zero plane uh, so i if i move in a circle like this okay uh, this circle is on z equals zero plane so along this path i move a charge of plus q uh, coulombs and starting from this point b uh, and uh, following this path i reached back at my initial point okay and the initial point let me call it a so initial point and final point are the same so this is the path which i followed uh, in the field of an infinite line uniform line charge lying on z axis so let's calculate the amount of work which i uh, did using equation number equation number 2 so minus q whatever the charge i had non zero value uh, into initial point b final point a integral okay and uh, limits from initial point to final point and electric field intensity of an infinite uniform line charge we all know is given by uh, rho l upon 2 pi epsilon naught rho a rho this is electric field intensity dotted with dl now we know that dl in cylindrical coordinate system is rho d rho plus rho d phi a phi plus dz dz this is what we have so now since i am moving in this path there is no dz i am staying on the same z equals zero plane uh, and since i am uh, moving in a circle so obviously there is no change in radius so this is also zero so dl is nothing but in this particular case dl is nothing but rho d phi a phi so if I replace dl instead of dl, I replace rho d phi a phi, and if I take all the constant out of the uh, constants out of the integral sign, so rho l is constant, rho is constant because we are moving in a circle, uh, and uh, in the denominator two pi epsilon naught, and again rho is constant, so rho rho is cancelled. So never mind. Uh, in the integral sign what we are left with we are left with uh, at d phi and a rho dot a phi this is what we are left with but we know that a rho dot a phi is zero so if i move in this particular fashion in this particular charge distribution although i have moved a non-zero charge in a non-zero field on a non-zero uh, distance the work done is still zero why because uh, the direction of motion throughout this path was perpendicular everywhere to the field because field had this component only and the direction of motion the path had this component only throughout its journey from initial point to final point so uh, this is a very important case so uh, we, i can say that this is an equi equi potential curve and moving uh, along this curve does not change the potential potential same right there so uh, that's that's a very uh, non trivial important case now if i choose to move a point charge the same point charge from this point b to this point a so this is dl uh, actually this is not dl if i you know segment make segment several segments of this path this is a total path if i make uh, a segment along this path what i'll get i'll get dl okay so let's try to apply equation number two in this case so the work done in this case is again because the field is uh, the field is rho l 
upon 2 pi epsilon naught rho a rho k this is the field of an infinite line charge starting from point b ending at point a uh, if i move in this direction along uh, z axis along y axis sorry so definitely uh, this is again dl is uh, d rho a rho plus rho d phi a phi plus uh, dz az okay so since i am along y axis no change in z since i am along y axis no change in phi phi is from here to here it remains 90 degrees uh, since I am on y axis, so dl is nothing but rho d rho, so I should replace rho, uh, sorry, not rho d rho, d rho a rho, okay. So, keeping the constants out of the integral sign minus q, rho l divided by 2 pi epsilon naught, now this time rho is not uh, constant, so I have to fully taken all the uh, constants out, b a and in the integral sign I will be left with uh, d rho upon rho so rho l out 2 pi epsilon not out rho remains d rho remains and uh, a rho dot a rho is 1 so needless to write it so if I now do the maths minus q rho l upon 2 pi epsilon not okay and this is nothing but ln rho okay uh, from b to a means that minus q rho l upon 2 pi epsilon naught uh, ln a minus ln oh, i use parenthesis no need ln b i should use it here now using the log property minus q rho l upon 2 pi epsilon naught ln a upon b is it so wow we have got the formula for work done in moving a charge q in the field of an infinite uniform line charge density from point b to point a which is definitely a non-zero work done okay so okay had we, had we moved in the direction like this let's say this is point b this is point a so again we would have the work done zero why try to figure it out yourself uh, i think it's not that difficult try to do it yourself so let's try to look at this for this formula so if i am moving from b to a okay from b to a and b is closer to z axis means that b is smaller because if I, if I would measure the distance, I would measure the distance with respect to uh, origin, is it? So it means that if, if B is smaller than A, meaning that I am moving uh, from a point which is closer to the source to a point which is away of the source. So it means that B is smaller than A. Uh, in that case, this ratio will be smaller than 1 because a is bigger sorry uh, uh, this ratio will be larger than 1 because a is bigger numerator is bigger so ln of anything larger than 1 will be a positive quantity and we have uh, chosen rho l to be a positive quantity and uh, we have chosen the charge to be a positive quantity okay so uh, uh, if we have decided to move a positive charge in the field of a uniform uh, infinite uniform line charge which is positive and this is the case then what we will end up in we will end up in a work done which is lesser than zero negative because a is greater numerator greater 
ratio is greater than 1 ln of anything natural log of anything greater than 1 is positive thing this is positive 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 and this negative sign will make everything uh, less than 0 okay it means that work done is negative all right so if the opposite case is true in that case a is smaller b is larger the ratio is smaller than 1 natural log of anything smaller than 1 is negative this is positive positive negative and this negative sign negative negative will make it positive work done is positive so work done is so i can see that work done is negative in this case and work done is positive in this case so what's happening it means that if I take a positive charge in the field of positively charged uh, line charge, if I put it here and if I let it go, definitely it will start to move in this direction because the field has only a rho component, okay? And that uh, positive field and positive charge will simply follow the streamline and will move in this direction. It means that uh, the work definitely that charge will get some kinetic energy it, it means that initially it was it had zero kinetic energy when you will release it it will attain some kinetic energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed if the charge is attaining some kinetic energy it means that it is absorbing some energy from somewhere to uh, and, and uh, you know getting kinetic energy so where that charge is getting getting the energy from that charge is getting energy from the system from the system so we can we will say that and work is done by the system on the charge okay so if work is done by the system it means that system is expanding is uh, yeah the system is expanding energy the system hai jo nizam hai kiska nizam charges ka jo nizam hai wo kaam kar raha hai charge ke upar to iska matlab kya hua ke nizam ki apni energy kam hogi so if the system is working is uh, uh, is doing some work on the charge it means that that the energy of the system will reduce that's that's why we will we will say that the work done is negative so it's very common to associate you know negative or positive with the work done or energy and if the charge is moved from if uh, a is less than b means a is somewhere here and b is somewhere here so it means that the charge has been moved from at this point to this point Okay, in this case, this case, A smaller, B larger, the charge is moving in this direction. Obviously, if that's a positive charge, we have already decided and this is a positively charged line charge, we have already decided if I, if the charge is initially at point B and if I release it, it should go in that direction. But it is moving in this direction means there is some surrounding other than this system which is not shown here anything which is not shown here is called surrounding and that surrounding is a uh, pseudo technical term so uh, now some surrounding is doing some work on this charge to move this charge against the field against the field and placing the charge here so obviously the surrounding is doing some work it means surrounding is expanding energy surrounding atraf jo hai system ka nizam ka atraf jo hai ab wo tawanai kharch kar raha hai so wo tawanai kahan jayegi tawanai can neither be created nor be destroyed that tawanai will be stored in the system okay so if the surrounding is working if the for my english understanding students if uh, the surrounding is doing some work to move this charge against the field from this point to this point it means that if surrounding is doing some work so that work that energy should be stored somewhere because energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed one fundamental formula of uh, beliefs of physics okay uh, tenets of physics so that energy which is expended by the surrounding to move this charge from this point to this point in this system will be stored in the system so overall energy of the system will increase so we will say that the work done is positive so remember that whenever the system 
everything which is shown here every arrangement which is shown here if this arrangement we will call the system this system is getting energy from some some unseen sources which is surrounding will say that the work done is positive otherwise the work done is negative all right so let's discuss now uh, potential difference and potential so the last expression which i derived here for infinite line charge i have written it over here and given it uh, number three uh, notice that i have removed the minus sign from that expression and just reverse the uh, numerator and the denominator over there previously we had ln a over b but minus sign here so i have removed this minus sign and changed it to b over a using the log property so now uh, defining discussing about work and not discussing about potential they are you know uh, they are intimately related to each other is uh, discussing about work and not discussing about potential the concept of potential or potential difference is just like discussing about Coulomb's forces and not discussing about electric field intensity all right so remember when we were discussing about electric field intensity uh, we said we I gave an example of you know two heavenly bodies earth and some huge mass maybe some some other planet I gave the example of maybe Jupiter so I'm going to do it here because the analogy between work done and potential difference is uh, kind of similar to that of uh, the force and electric field intensity so let's say I I choose one uh, of my student uh, and we are some at some other you know advanced planet of my own planet ARJS and I choose two of my students and send one of them to Earth and I don't tell them anything about Earth and I send uh, my second student to Jupiter. Definitely, the uh, now we know that uh, that Earth has got acceleration due to gravity uh, 9.8 meter per second is square and Jupiter has got uh, I don't I don't remember but you know some some uh, probably a, if I'm if I'm not wrong don't sue me if I'm wrong it's I think six times G or or if I'm not wrong 20 times C somewhere you know uh, although it's very different different uh, yeah, uh, difference is huge 6g or 20g whatever the case may be but uh, the point is that the uh, acceleration due to gravity at Jupiter is uh, within this order it's not like thousand times higher okay so let's for the sake of argument I don't remember exactly gosh I remember that earlier uh, so acceleration due to gravity at earth is this at uh, Jupiter it is 20 times the earth acceleration due to gravity uh, somehow uh, uh, I know it but I did not tell my students uh, student number one that GE is this uh, or yeah I, I told a student number one that GE is this but I did not tell uh, student number one that GJ is this and I uh, said uh, I sent a student two on Jupiter and told him that GE is this whatever the value may be but I did not tell him uh, uh, I told him GJ is this but did not tell him uh, what GE is so it is approximately if I for the sake of argument so it is let's say 200 meter per second square I told student 2 that uh, acceleration due to gravity as Jupiter is 200 meter per second but I did not tell him that uh, on the earth where I sent student number one, uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. So, and I asked them to okay uh, measure the work done in moving uh, in moving some mass within this gravi gra gravitational field. So, let's say student one decided to use uh, the mass of 10 kilograms. Okay, and uh, student two. Uh, decided to choose I uh, decided to use a mass of 1 milligram which is exponent minus 3 kilograms we all know that uh, both of my students know that the formula uh, for potential energy or the work done in moving a mass from one height 
let's say h1 to another height let's say h2 is given by this let's say that the difference is h so both of my students know that the work done in moving a, a mass m from this height to this height h1 to h2 is which is h is mgh so i ask them to okay uh, plot or sketch the uh, work done in moving a mass in Jupiter and in Earth. So if that's the case, we are running an experiment to sketch the work field or energy field around Earth and Jupiter. If I did not tell my student that you should use a same judge mass means that me as a scientist is not clear about the concepts so before sending my students i must tell them student one you should use one kilograms student two you should use one kilogram so the judge should be the same because if the judge is not the same the jupiter whose acceleration due to gravity or gravitational force is definitely higher much larger as compared to earth because the mass is much larger the student two would the results would suggest that when both of the students will come to their headquarters to me the results would suggest that the ma the uh, gravity or the energy required to move a mass in jupiter is a smaller considerably as compared to the earth why because the student two moved a one milligram mass in the field of jupiter so the work done in uh, in moving a one milligram mass from height h1 to height h2 so this difference is h so if a student two would use the same formula definitely definitely although uh, if I would give it a number, so 10 kilograms multiplied by 9.8, so I am writing it GE here, H, this will be the potential energy, okay? And here, the potential energy will be uh, exponent minus 3, and G at Jupiter is uh, 20 times of GE, and height, so if I would compare potential energy on earth and potential energy on jupiter so if i would divide potential energy on earth divided by potential energy on jupiter meaning the amount of work potential energy meaning amount of work in moving a mass from uh, one point one height h1 to another height h2 uh, will be if i would divide uh, this by that this by that what i'll get i'll get 10000 in the numerator uh, and ge will be cancelled h will be cancelled multiply by 20 so i'll get 2 lakh so it means that the uh, the, uh, the energy required to move a mass from this point to this point height h in other words the same height here the amount of work to move a mass by height h in earth requires 2 lakh or 200,000 times more energy than moving a mass by the same height within the gravitational field of Jupiter so this result is obviously wrong because we know that the gravitational pull and the force and the mass of Jupiter is several times higher than Earth. So it means there is something fundamentally wrong with the experiment and that fundamental wrong is the choosing of a wrong or, or a different judge. If I want to compare the, uh, the energy required in moving a mass in this field, in this gravitational field, uh, with this one, I should choose a same judge mass. And uh, for the ease of calculation, I should tell my students before sending them on these planets that you both should use the same amount, the same mass to map the amount of work done to move a mass from some height to to move one kilogram mass from some height h1 
to some other height h2 and then use this formula definitely the amount of work which is done on the mass will be stored in the form of potential energy will be stored in the form of potential energy so with this premise uh, i should stop here and i'll continue in the next lecture inshallah thank you very much